Hello and welcome to my hangar. You notice there's something missing here. There's no airplane. This all started in October when I went in for annual inspection. I'd had a mag drop the week before. I was real interested in looking in the mags. And sure enough, we found some issues in there that looked like they were possibly the, the cause. My mechanic, Bob Russell, is real good with the D engine mags and uh, went through it. The challenge came when we went to put the mag back on the engine and we found this. This bearing clearly is that end of life. It's had a difficult time. It's got about 300 hours on it. My understanding is that there's um, possibly a bushing in there that might have spun if it wasn't staked. I don't know for sure. But this engine is toast, and so it's at least IRAN and possibly overhaul time. The 300 hours on the engine, I hope it's an IRAN, but we'll see. At the same time, I thought it was the right time to transition from an IO360 A1B6D engine to an IO360 A1B6 which has separate mags and a couple of other advantages. So I talked to my favorite engine shop, got the engine over to them. They're in Poplar Grove. Um, they are uh, able to do a transition like that as part of a tra an overhaul or an IRAM. And um, we went through the list of parts that were required and decided that the best plan for getting those parts was probably to buy a donor engine, which I did. I found one at Wentworth, an A1B6 engine, and um, brought it here to my shop to tear it down and then bring those parts over to Poplar Grove. And they'll tear, tear down my A1B6D engine and then build, hopefully, one good engine from both of those together. My son Michael helps me. Parts are already over in Poplar Grove and they're looking them over. So hopefully there'll be more good news to talk about as this process continues. In the meantime, I hope you find this interesting. We start with the particle port box on the two by four pallet. It's hard to get apart, it was all put together with staples. and. Uh, the wood ripped before the staples came out. They did a nice job of packing it, setting out a piece of foam like that. So Mike got started with the spark plugs and I started on the accessory case, pulling things off. Tops and bottoms. I got the mags off, governor. And Mike starts working on the injector lines. And I'm working on that vacuum pump. Vacuum points a lot easier to get off when you've got everything else off, in fact, uh, you'll see I get pretty far down before that vacuum pump finally gets off of there. Those are a pain to get off. The injector lines are a little bit tight. One of them in particular was pretty well frozen. And Mike did a good job on that. I really fussed with that fuel pump. This came from a, um, a Scottish aviation bulldog, and it had a shroud around the fuel pump on it. The uh, governor drive case, I guess, or uh, adapter, was broken on this engine, possibly uh, from an earlier shipment or maybe from the incident that made it a spare engine. But uh, Wentworth said they would replace it, they have more. So we got the filter case off there and uh, started digging a little deeper. One of the things I did was I tried to loosen all of the fittings on the back of this accessory case while it was tied down nicely. We originally had an idea to lift this thing up to a working surface that was a little higher, two by fours or uh, what do you call, uh, sawhorses or something, but um, it's really hard to get a pallet off the ground with an automotive style engine hoist because the legs are in the way. So now we're getting to um, the uh, valve covers. They come off pretty fast and then we start pulling the pins. Really agonized over whether to try to pull this all at once or take it apart in pieces. And I ended up taking it apart, um, taking the rockers out, pulling the, the uh, tubes out first. Got the cylinder wrenches out, and we are cranking. And uh, Mike is doing, doing a real good job of getting in there with rags and stuffing them underneath so that when that um, connection draw comes down onto the uh, the engine case, it, it, uh, it has a rag, a red rag to, to sit on top of so it doesn't hurt anything. They come out pretty easily, actually. Just bolts and wrenches, and then we... Uh, Pulled the pistons out, just a little bit of light tapping with a dowel to get some of those piston pins out. Some of them came out real easy, others not so much. And then we pulled the connecting rods just to get those out of the way so they wouldn't be flopping around. Our next step was pulling off the bolts that hold the intake manifold slash oil pan on the bottom. Get rid of the uh, prop drive tube, some Adele clamps, just um, working our way towards getting the bottom off of this engine. And somewhere around in here, I start working on the through bolts. And I stacked up the, uh, the little spacers that come off the through bolts and put a wrench on them 
and uh, use those, uh, just use the bolt to then pull the through bolts out. You see them coming. Got a couple of the ropes off now for a little better access. And now it's time to rotate. Took the top through bolts out here, the quarter inch ones. And I uh, got it out of sight so we can start taking off the uh, accessories on the front bottom of the engine there. Meanwhile, I was pulling bolts off of the accessory case. I helped Mike with the fold over locking tabs on the starter and then the, the bottom came off pretty fast. And uh, they gave us a lighter weight object to move over to the better work surface. Got the accessory case housing off. Pulled a couple of little details off of there, just a little tap tap and it came off. Got the hidden bolt behind the cam and then the uh, bolts on the bottom of the case and then started splitting the case with cedar strips, the, the tapered cedar strips you use for mounting doors and windows. They're pretty nice. You can poke the nose in between and slide one in between and tap tap and add just a little bit of pressure without having any kind of a hard surface on the, uh, the case halves themselves. Of course, there's limited space at the front, so you have to keep breaking the ends of the spacers or the, the, the wedges off and just keep tapping them. You see them going around, tap, 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 all the way around. And pretty quickly, the uh, case top popped right off. And we got to see the crankshaft cam and followers. Everything looked pretty good. So we used a pretty good assortment of tools for this project, just average stuff around the house. We ended up with quite a pile of leftover accessories and parts. And um, the, uh, the, of course, the bones of the engine itself, those are the, uh, the critical important parts. Crankshaft is somewhere. And then uh, this all ended up in a series of boxes and ready for uh, transport. So that's the process. It took about six and a half, seven hours and um, resulted in a big pile of parts that went off to Poplar Grove. I'll let you know how things work out from here. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for riding along.